Hello everyone. This video presents a notable event that happened on each day from the past month in history. On January 1st, 1735, Paul Revere, silversmith and patriot, was born, starting a long line of famous Americans born on the first of the year. Which one of these New Year's babies do you rate as the greatest? Feel free to nominate your own choice. Paul Revere, Revolutionary, 1735. Anthony Wayne, General, 1745. Betsy Ross, Flag Designer, 1752. Frank Knox, World War II Secretary of the Navy, 1874. William J. Donovan, General and Master Spy, 1883. Edgar Hoover, Director of the FBI, 1895. Hank Greenberg, 1911, Baseball Player. J.D. Salinger, Army Veteran and Author, 1919. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Zar of History and Headlines, and today I want to wish all of my family, friends, colleagues, students, and subscribers who are celebrating a birthday in 2024 the happiest of birthdays. Happy As a question for my students and subscribers, what are you most looking forward to in 2024? Please let me know in the comments section for this video. On January 2nd, 2022, the Omicron variant of the COVID virus was on the rise, but that was minor news compared to the top stories of 2022, some of which include number one, Russia invaded Ukraine, number two, Inflation ran rampant and gasoline reached an average of $5 per gallon. Number three, Queen Elizabeth II died and Charles III took the throne. Number four, the Cleveland Browns dumped Baker Mayfield and signed Deshaun Watson to a record contract. Number five, Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. Number six, the ongoing investigations of Donald Trump resulted in his company being found guilty of fraud and his tax returns being released. Number seven, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Number eight, the world population passed 8 billion people. And number nine, Boris Johnson resigned as the U.K. Prime Minister. On January 3rd, 1944, America's leading fighter ace of that time, Marine Major Pappy Boyington, was shot down and taken captive by the Japanese. Today we take a look at some of the leading fighter pilot aces of World War II by their country. Johnny Johnson, Britain, 38 kills. Pierre Klosterman, France, 33 kills. Eric Hartmann, Germany, 352 kills. Teresio Martinoli, Italy, 22 plus 14 shared kills. Tetsuzo Iwamoto, Japan, 80 kills. Stanislaw Skalski, Poland, 22 kills. Richard Bong, USA, 40 kills. Ivan Kozdub, USSR, 66 kills. And Lydia Litviak, USSR, 5 to 12 kills, top female ace of all time. Who do you believe is the best fighter pilot of all time? On January 4, 2010, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai opened in the United Arab Emirates, taking top honors as the world's tallest building, an honor it still holds. Today we take a look at some of the tallest man-made structures on the earth. Burj Khalifa skyscraper, United Arab Emirates, 2,717 feet high. Petronius oil platform, United States, 2,100 feet high. Tokyo Skytree Broadcast Tower, Japan, 2,080 feet high. KVLY TV antenna mast, United States, 2,063 feet high. Canton Tower Observational Tower, China, 1,982 feet high. Average Al Bait skyscraper, Saudi Arabia, 1,972 feet high. And Bullwinkle Oil Platform, United States, 1,736 feet high. On January 5, 1972, President Richard M. Nixon announced the Space Shuttle Program, an American space exploration system that would go on to make 135 trips to space over three decades, carrying astronauts from 16 different countries. 
Today we list a few of Nixon's accomplishments often overlooked by his Watergate complicity. He was president during the first moon landing in 1969. He decreased Cold War tension with the USSR, known as detente, in 1969. He worked to racially desegregate the U.S. from 1969 to 1974. He established the EPA and other environmental initiatives in 1970. He established OSHA in 1970. He ended large-scale U.S. participation in the Vietnam War in 1972. He initiated normal relations with China in 1972, and he endorsed the Equal Rights Amendment in 1972. On January 6, 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt, FDR, delivered perhaps his greatest speech, known as the Four Freedoms Speech. FDR is but one of many famous orators that have delivered great speeches, and today we list a few of those famous talks, asking you to tell us which of these or others you believe is the greatest speech of all time. Number one, Pericles, Funeral Oration, 431 B.C. Number two, Socrates, Apology, 399 B.C. Number three, Mark Antony, Eulogy of Julius Caesar, 44 B.C. Number four, Patrick Henry, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death, 1775. Number five, Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg Address, 1863. Number six, Winston Churchill, Blood, Toil, Tears and Sweat, and We Shall Fight on the Beaches, 1940. Number seven, Franklin Roosevelt, Nothing to Fear but Fear Itself, 1933. On January 7, 1948, a Kentucky National Guard pilot, a World War II veteran, attempted to intercept a UFO along with three other U.S. F-51 Mustang fighters. Multiple reports from Ohio and Kentucky said a huge, round, white object was up there and needed to be investigated. Three of the Mustangs finally turned back, but one unfortunate pilot kept going up and up until he lost control of his fighter, which crashed, killing the pilot. Are these reports of supposedly extraterrestrial flying objects real? We have 17 previous articles on the subject, and the U.S. Air Force took the subject seriously enough to commission Project Blue Book. Even more intriguing was a promise in late 2022 that the U.S. Department of Defense would soon release a report on UFO encounters. On January 8, 1835, President Andrew Jackson saw fit to celebrate the rarest of events in American history, the only time the U.S. has ever had a zero balance for a national debt. This rare and wonderful situation lasted until 1837, never to be seen again. Today we routinely talk about our national debt, which is about $31.5 trillion at this time. Our spending for fiscal year 2023 has exceeded our tax revenues by about $336 billion, adding that amount to our national debt. The last time the U.S. had a balanced budget where spending did not exceed revenues was during 1998 to 2001 when Bill Clinton was president. Oddly enough, even during a budget surplus, the U.S. national debt still grew. Will we ever balance our budget again? Most observers say no. On January 9, 1861, the state of Mississippi seceded from the United States of America, the second of the slaveholding states to do so. The states that seceded and formed the Confederate States of America included South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Slaveholding states that chose not to secede were Maryland and Delaware. Two other states were split between those that wanted to secede and those that remained loyal to the Union and actually belonged to both sides during the American Civil War, namely Kentucky and Missouri. The Missouri State Legislature voted to not secede, but enough Missourians sent delegates to the Confederacy to claim membership. While Kentucky was technically a neutral state within the Union, but a plurality of counties in Kentucky voted for secession on January 10th, 1927, Fritz Lang's classic film Metropolis was released in Germany. This iconic film made during the silent film era cost the modern equivalent of 21 million euros and is considered to be among the greatest films ever made. Oddly enough, Orson Welles, creator of another candidate for greatest movie, Citizen Kane, called Metropolis silly. 
Some of the other films others have called the greatest include Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz, Vertigo, Jaws, The Seven Samurai, The Godfather, Battleship Potemkin, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Obviously, criteria such as biggest box office take, most people who have seen it, opinion polls, and critical reviews can all be used to determine the so-called greatest movie. Which film do you place at the top of the list? On January 11th, 1569, the first documented example of a lottery in England took place. Although 1569 seems like a long time ago, lotteries actually go back much, much farther. The first evidence of any sort of government-run lottery for money game takes us back to the Chinese Han Dynasty somewhere between 205 and 187 BC. This money-raising scheme was for the purpose of financing public works, including the Great Wall of China. Lotteries first showed up in Europe in the Roman Empire, first in private parties, and later under Emperor Augustus as a government function. Lotteries continued throughout European history and arrived in America with European colonization. American lotteries can date back to 1612 in Virginia, with a lottery authorized by King James I. Should the identity of lottery winners be made public? On January 12, 2005, the American Space Exploration Agency known as NASA launched a mission called Deep Impact, a probe designed to violently impact the comet Temple 1. The goal of the Deep Impact project was to have an impactor strike the comet hard enough to dislodge material from the comet's core for NASA scientists to study the material that makes up the core. On July 4, 2005, the impactor performed as designed and struck the comet a mighty blow, leaving a crater and dislodging core material. Analysis of the dislodged material revealed a greater concentration of space dust and less icy material than suspected. The main spacecraft part of Deep Impact continued on to explore space until contact with the spacecraft was lost in August of 2013. On January 13, 2022, the National Shooting Sports Foundation warned American firearms enthusiasts of an online scam targeting those looking to buy a new firearm. Firearms are big business in the United States, with nearly 400 million guns owned by private citizens. In a set of statistics that might just surprise you, the most popular single type of rifle in the U.S. is the M16 AR-15 family of weapons, with a total civilian ownership of between 20 million and 44 million, depending on the source. When other military-looking types of guns are included in the erroneous but blanket description of assault weapons, such as the AK-47 family of guns, M1 carbines, and the like, a staggering number of such weapons reside in private American homes. About 2.7 million such firearms are sold to American citizens each year. On January 14, 1952, The Today Show, also simply called Today, made its debut on NBC television, the first daily morning television talk show. Originally a two-hour-long show, the program has evolved into a four-hour composite morning television powerhouse, basically unchallenged in its genre until the introduction of Good Morning America on ABC and the ascendance of that program in the 1980s. These two morning shows have exchanged the coveted number one rating a few times over the years, and in keeping with the times, Today now also offers a 24 hours streaming show called Today All Day on both the NBC website and on Peacock streaming service. Today has had over 18,000 episodes and has run for 70 plus seasons. Do you watch Today? What is your favorite morning television show? On January 15, 1967, the NFL champion Green Bay Packers faced off with the American Football League champion Kansas City Chiefs, defeating the Chiefs 35-10 in a game later called the first Super Bowl. Back when there were two major professional football leagues, the people running those leagues got the bright and money-making idea to have a championship game between the respective league champions. If you are too young to recall, that first Super Bowl was actually called the AFL-NFL World Championship Game, 
and the term Super Bowl did not come into use until the third such game, although the first two games were retroactively called Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II. So far, 56 Super Bowl games have been played. Have you seen any of them in person? As a question for my students and subscribers, what team will win the 57th Super Bowl? On January 16, 1537, an armed insurrection took place in England, specifically in Cumberland and Westmoreland, pitting unhappy Roman Catholics against the blasphemous King Henry VIII. Known as Bigod's Rebellion, this religious war sounds mighty close to By Gods, a somehow almost appropriate name. The name of the rebellion actually derived from Sir Francis Bigod, a leader of the revolt. King Henry VIII had infamously disbanded the Catholic Church in England and started his own brand of Christianity, later called the Church of England, in order to legitimize his marital wishes. The rebellion failed in less than a month, and Sir Bigod, along with 215 of his followers, were executed, some hanged and some drawn and quartered. As a question for my students and subscribers, what war, conflict, or rebellion do you believe has the oddest name? On January 17, 2013, renowned American cyclist Lance Armstrong admitted on Oprah's Next Chapter, a primetime television show, that he was, as suspected and accused, a cheater that won seven consecutive Tour de France bicycle races through the assistance of banned drugs. Professional and amateur athletes have been using performance-enhancing drugs for decades now, including stimulants such as cocaine and amphetamines and a variety of hormones usually characterized as steroids. Other banned substances include blood doping agents that increase the ability of blood to carry oxygen and even gene manipulation to enhance performance. Some types of painkillers are banned, and even sedatives used to steady nerves have been misused by athletes. Should professional athletes be allowed to use PEDs? On January 18, 2023, Americans celebrate another National Thesaurus Day, a day to be thankful for that reference book that helps us find other ways to say the same thing. Oddly enough, there is no other word for thesaurus. Why do we choose to celebrate National Thesaurus Day on January 18th? Because that is the day of birth for Peter Marc Roger back in 1779, the man that gave us Roger's thesaurus, a staple in every student's desk. At the age of 61, Roger retired from his career as a physician and embarked on his true life's work, creating and expanding his thesaurus, or more exactly titled, Roger's Thesaurus of English Words and Phrases. The book was first published in 1852, and while exact numbers are hard to find, perhaps 33 million or more copies have been sold. On January 19, 2007, three intrepid Britons and their equally intrepid Canadian comrade made an incredible journey across Antarctica, using only leg-powered driving skis and the assistance of kites to reach a point known as the Antarctic Pole of Inaccessibility. The team called Team N2I trekked almost 1,100 miles over the frozen terrain to the place called POI, for short, a spot on the globe previously visited by explorers using motorized tracked vehicles and aircraft back in 1965. So what is the POI? It is defined as the point in Antarctica that is furthest from any ocean shore in any direction, a place the Soviets visited in 1958 and a later American expedition visited in 1965. On January 20th, 1947, only three months before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and became the first African-American Major League Baseball player, the famous catcher and slugger from the Negro Leagues of Baseball, Josh Gibson, died at the young age of 35 of a stroke brought on by a brain tumor. Gibson is now recognized by Major League Baseball as having had the highest single season batting average of all time, 466 in 1943. As of 2020, MLB recognizes Negro League statistics as belonging in Major League category. Gibson also slugged about 800 home runs at all levels of baseball, making him the probable all-time career home run hitter as well. 
His career batting average in the Negro Leagues was 374, topping the record of Ty Cobb, who hit 366. Who is your favorite baseball player? On January 21st, 2023, we celebrate Squirrel Appreciation Day, one of the greatest holidays in all of the rodent kingdom. Yes, squirrels are rodents, cousins to mice and rats, although with a much more attractive coat. Tree squirrels, ground squirrels, chipmunks, prairie dogs, and flying squirrels are all in this expansive family. Although squirrels are native to the Americas, Asia, and Africa, they had to be introduced to Australia and Europe. Often accused of crimes such as stealing food from bird feeders and burglarizing houses, squirrels provide a lot of visual enjoyment as they scurry about looking for food, especially for old folks that hand feed them in the park. Ground squirrels include the weather forecasting groundhogs, but the main type we think of in the U.S. are fox squirrels, red squirrels, and gray squirrels. How do you plan to celebrate Squirrel Appreciation Day? On January 22, 1992, NASA launched mission STS-42, the Space Shuttle Discovery, into space with a crew that included Ukrainian-Canadian Dr. Roberta Bondar, a neurologist. The first Canadian woman and the first neurologist to become an astronaut, Bondar is a woman of many accomplishments and is yet another example of Canadians of Ukrainian descent such as Alex Trebek and Wayne Gretzky to achieve great things. A highly accomplished scholar, Bondar was educated at the University of Guelph, BSc, the University of Western Ontario, MSc, the University of Toronto, PhD, and McMaster University, MD. Bondar's scientific drive and sense of adventure led her to become one of the first six people in the Canadian Astronaut Corps in 1983. Who is your favorite astronaut? On January 23, 1570, history of the infamous type was made when James Stewart, the Earl of Moray, was murdered by an assassin using a firearm. Stewart was acting as regent for the young King James VI of Scotland. James VI became King of Scotland at the age of one year old when his mother, Mary Queen of Scots, abdicated the throne. James Stuart was himself the illegitimate son of King James V of Scotland. Ongoing resentment of Mary's supporters bode ill for her successors. At the town of Linlithgow, the Earl was passing in a public cavalcade down the street when James Hamilton of Bothwell House fired a single shot from a carbine, striking the Earl a fatal blow in the gut. The shot had been fired from a window in the home of Archbishop Hamilton. The Earl was succeeded by his eldest daughter Elizabeth Stewart, second Countess of Moray. On January 24th, 2023, Americans celebrate National Peanut Butter Day, a day when we can savor the flavor of our favorite bread spread that lends itself to making cookies, pies, candies, and other foodstuffs. Who do we have to thank for this wonderful food? It may surprise you that George Washington Carver did not invent peanut butter, since he was such an influential proponent of the goober pea and is often erroneously given credit for this particular advance in eating pleasure. The ancient Aztecs and Incas made a form of peanut butter about 1000 BC, though the modern form owes its existence to evolutionary steps by Marcus Edson, John Kellogg, Ambrose Straub, and Joseph Rosefield. While peanut butter made its mass market debut in 1904, it is Rosefield we can thank for peanut butter as we know it. On January 25, 1585, Walter Raleigh, an English explorer and adventurer, was knighted by Queen Elizabeth I of England, perhaps because he named a region of North America, Virginia, in honor of the Virgin Queen. Helping to suppress Irish rebellion, defending England against the Spanish Armada, and being a key figure in the colonization of North America, Raleigh became somewhat of a celebrity of his time, although he also had some problems along the way. Plunked into jail for marrying without the Queen's permission, Raleigh was released and chased after the mythical city of gold, El Dorado. After Elizabeth died, he once again went to prison for conspiring against King James I, but again was released to pursue El Dorado. After illegally attacking and looting a Spanish outpost, Raleigh was executed by the English to mollify Spain. Does Raleigh deserve his spot on the list of 100 Greatest Britons? 
On January 26, 2009, a single California woman gave birth to eight babies at one time, becoming the first mother of octuplets that survived infancy. Nadia Salman was born a native Californian to parents of Lithuanian and Palestinian descent, and while she was married from 1996 to 2008, she was single when she underwent fertility treatments prior to having her eight babies. She attended Mount San Antonio College and earned a BS and a psychiatric technician license, applying her education to a job in a mental health facility for three years. Prior to the record-setting births, Nadia, or Natalie, as she is now known, gave birth to six other children. It was later revealed that a fertility doctor had transplanted 12 frozen embryos into Solomon's womb, eight of which were born. On January 27, 1880, Thomas Edison patented the incandescent light bulb, the first truly commercially viable electric light bulb, but certainly not the first light bulb. Prior to Edison's patent, other inventors experimented with various ways to produce light from electricity, including Englishman Joseph Swan, who actually marketed the first light bulbs used to light homes and other buildings in 1881. Prior to Swan and Edison's successes at producing viable electric light, Ebenezer Kinnersley, an English scientist, first showed how a wire heated by passing an electric current through it caused the wire to glow, producing the first man-made incandescent light. All these inventors laid the groundwork for Edison's patent, while still others claimed to be the real inventor. As a question for my students and subscribers, who would you credit with being the inventor of the light bulb? On January 28, 1547, the nine-year-old son of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour, Edward VI, became King of England. Not only did his ill-fated mother die shortly after his birth, Edward himself was fated to a reign of only six and a half years, dying of an illness at the age of 15. Edward VI is easily forgotten in the muddle of the successors that followed him, starting with his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, whom Edward had named his heir before he died. Seen by Catholics as an attempt to prevent the reestablishment of Catholicism in England, Jane Grey was deposed only nine days after becoming queen and promptly executed by her Catholic successor, Queen Mary I, a half-sister of Edward known lovingly as Bloody Mary. Upon the death of Mary in 1558, Elizabeth I, another half-sister of Edward, became queen. On January 29, 2002, U.S. President George W. Bush coined a new phrase in his State of the Union address to Congress, labeling Iraq, Iran, and North Korea as the axis of evil. Bush accused these states of being regimes that sponsor terror, a highly charged topic in the U.S., Bush apparently liked the sound of his new designation and used the phrase often in his remaining years in office. The allusion in the phrase to Axis would harken back to the Axis powers of World War II, consisting of Germany, Japan, and their allies, and the invention of such a label is reminiscent of Ronald Reagan calling the Soviet Union the evil empire. Not surprisingly, Iran, a country labeled as a sponsor of terror, coined a counterphrase, the axis of resistance, including itself along with Syria and the Islamist group Hezbollah as members. Would you add any other countries to the axis of evil? On January 30th, 1925, Douglas Engelbart was born in Portland, Oregon. Engineer, inventor, and computer pioneer, Engelbart would make our lives easier by inventing the computer mouse patented in 1970. Engelbart was educated at Oregon State University and the University of California at Berkeley and went on to his life's work of improving human-computer interaction, creating user-friendly ways of using computers and the internet. Engelbart founded the Doug Engelbart Institute and received numerous honors and awards, including the National Medal of Technology, the U.S.'s highest technology award. Incredibly, his employers at Tim Share and McDonnell Douglas failed to appreciate his innovative ideas, and he retired in 1986 to found his own institute. What is your favorite computer-related innovation? On January 31, 1915, 
the German army, in violation of the 1899 Hague Declaration concerning asphyxiating gases, launched 18,000 artillery shells containing xylyl bromide tear gas against Russian positions, the first truly large-scale use of poison gas in combat. In World War I, the first and most common use of poison gas was using various tear gas-type weapons first developed by the French for riot control, not toxic but irritating and capable of degrading the enemy's combat ability. By April of 1915, the stakes were raised by German use of chlorine gas, a deadly poison. Later developments in gas warfare produced phosgene gas used by both sides and often mixed with chlorine. Mustard gas, a particularly diabolical agent, caused the most chemical casualties of World War I. As a question for my students and subscribers, which event from this past month in history would you most like to learn more about? Please let me know in the comments section below this video. If you liked this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated. For image, audio, and other credits and attributions for components of the individual videos in this compilation, please see the descriptions of their respective videos, which are linked to via a playlist in this video's description.